Hi everybody, I'm Morgan Crosby from Finch Chevrolet in London, Ontario, Canada, and you're watching Cars and Crosby. Yesterday was the first day of spring. This is an important thing because as a car guy, that means that the ticket to freedom is about to happen. And I did a thing. I've been talking about it for a while on the channel and it's happened. Today on this episode, we will learn about the next Cars and Crosby project that I'm gonna have for the driving season starting right now. <laughs> Ear to ear, this is the, I, I couldn't be more excited right now. I got fresh little hyacinth on my desk over here, getting ready for the spring season, getting that snow all out of here. And uh, well, uh, things don't always go according to plan, and this is a really great example of it uh, in today's purchase. I um, sold my C8 in the fall. I had over 30,000 kilometers on it, um, and it was getting to the point where um, you know, I, I had done everything that I could on that vehicle, even though it was one of the first ones off the line and it was a sentimental vehicle for me, I knew that there was other things coming through the pipes uh, with General Motors. I have my name down on a number of different vehicles through General Motors and um, I always got to keep the show rolling and um, down the road maybe I'll regret some of the vehicles that I end up selling, um, but I, I got to keep the song and dance going and uh, that was my logic on it and I'm going to stick to it. The, the thing that I didn't plan on, and maybe this is a, a little naive on my behalf, is that I had a feeling that the supply chain network was going to kind of right itself and that with ETAs on vehicles, we would have a little bit more prediction on what they would be. The problem that came about was that um, the new E-Ray and other Corvettes are not really being produced in the same time frame that I was anticipating. And uh, because of that, uh, I don't have a CA Corvette right now. There's a lot of different things that could attribute to that. For example, yesterday, a plant in Grand Rapids, Michigan that makes wheels for us blew up. I don't know what happened there, but in terms of wheel shortages, if we weren't already having shortages on the forge wheels, we're now gonna run into issues because there's a plant that's blown up in Grand Rapids. That's just yesterday, you know? So anticipating that on average there's 16,000 parts inside of a vehicle and at any given moment one of those parts could have an issue that could bottleneck on other things because it might be uh, a supplier that only makes that specific component now you can understand where these plant managers at all of our facilities uh, experience on a daily basis and I think it was naive on my behalf to think that just because the pandemic is look looking like it's over knock on wood that everything would kind of write its course doesn't seem to be the case because life's getting in the way and uh, so be it so this is not uh, to be um, a sad episode, this is a very positive episode as you can see from my ear to ear smile because it's the first day of spring and I purchased a car. I uh, have been mentioning for a long time that I wanted to get a specific car and I looked yesterday on the OPP's uh, most wanted list and I'm not, I do not have a warrant out for my arrest as of right now for not having a manual transmission. I think it's a crime to not have a manual transmission vehicle and it's been four years that I've been on the run without having a manual transmission. So it's long overdue. That should be a really good hint before we get to this dealership. I did not purchase this vehicle through our own dealership. This is the first time that I've been in your shoes and buying a car from somebody else. That in itself was a new experience that I will obviously report upon. And uh, I'm really excited about this in particular because it's a manual transmission. It's the first day of spring. And uh, yeah, without further ado, let's go on an adventure and go pick up my next car. All right, we are in the land of greenhouses and I'm getting excited. This is uh, a special feeling. Anytime you're about to see a car for the first time, this is a blind date. I've never seen this car. And uh, it's also the first time I've ever bought a car from a different dealership. Uh, I've always taken selfies, so unfortunately this is not going to be a selfie. But uh, so be it. It's just how uh, things come about. Uh, lots of uh, greenhouses, and this one smells a little funky. I think that there's some cannabis being grown in that one right there. Um, oof, that smells. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we are... Uh, about two hours outside of London and uh, we're about to go into Leamington G 
GM, which is the dealership that sold uh, me this Corvette. And uh, we're gonna document this blind date and this whole experience and the new adventure. So uh, stay tuned, we're just around the corner. All right, I see a Chevy dealership. Here we go, guys. My first dealership experience. <laughs> Exciting. Truck month. Look at that. They got a Sambu Metallic and a Bentley out front. Continental. Very nicely done. It's a nice uke there as well. Maybe it's already outside. Oh. Well, this is Leamington GM's inventory. And it might be still in the showroom. Probably is. Okay, it's a windy one in Leamington, but oh, it's right here at the doors. Look at this, guys. <sighs> a new project. All right, guys. Allow me to introduce you to this Arctic White 2LT 2019 Grand Sport. And the most important thing, the reason why we're here, a seven-speed manual transmission and 11,000 kilometers on the odometer. It is mid-March summer's right around the corner driving season's coming to boot we need to get a car and i've got a manual c7 to have some fun with i'm particularly excited to have some more storage they have 11 and a half cubic feet of storage in the back of a coupe on a c7 and i really enjoy that that to me is one of the biggest things that you have you have a ticket for fun and all this extra space to be able to store stuff. You got big obtuse items and stuff like that. You can fit a lot more in a C7 back end than you can inside of a C8. This is basically a manual transmission station wagon with 465 horsepower. Let's let games begin, guys. Here we go. Look at that soul sticker. Very nice. all hunkered in here oh man it's good to be back <sighs> all right she's back on finch ground um let's just go over everything about what we've got going on i don't know how much of this episode is going to be related to the final product i feel like i'm gonna have to break this up um so in terms of like just Breaking down what I have here, I think it's also um, important to kind of note the. Um, sorry, I'm just adjusting something on my little dongle here. Um, I think it's important to kind of just start off with doing a way more detailed breakdown of, of what I have and the condition because um, it's a four year old car. This is um, not in warranty. So at the end of the day, uh, in terms of the bumper to bumper, it's gone from this specific model. And uh, every C7 now will have not had a warranty on it. So everyone that's watching this that has a C7 is gonna be in the same boat. Um, and th if I haven't already mentioned it, this this is gonna be a very eclectic series for me. And yes, it's gonna be a series. We'll probably do three parts because the premise of this whole adventure is to get this ready for a uh, voyage down to Bowling Green for the uh, NCM bash, and I'm gonna do it on a budget. So I'm going to spend $10,000 on getting this Corvette ready. So $8,500, $7,600 American, uh, let's call it $7,500 American on getting this Corvette up to the Cars and Crosby standards. And I have one month almost to the date, a month and a week, five weeks, to get it ready before I have to drive down to Kentucky to the National Corvette Museum bash. 
And I think that's a fun little adventure. I think it's going to be really great to put me under the, the gun for um, a time frame and uh, go through this adventure with you guys. So this is going to be the beginning of a three-part series going over the details of uh, my latest purchase. Uh, it's very eclectic because I had a C7. A lot of the things that I've done on my previous Corvettes were not documented because I did not have a channel back then. So this is really gonna be like riding a bike for me in terms of doing a lot of the stuff. And I hope you guys, if you have a C7, maybe can take some stuff away from this that instead of, um, you know, having to buy a new vehicle in order to get some fun, maybe you can rekindle your relationship with your C7 and use this as a reference. So um, without further ado, let's just start breaking down some things that I've picked apart on the vehicle from end to end. Uh, this is the uh, stage one uh, splitter and side spats, or some people call them the, the fender extensions. A um, couple things to note in this area in particular. This is all pitted plastic. These fascias here are made of a more of a rubberized material. And you can see that um, some wax has gone on there. And then we've also got some wear right in that area. We've got some wear right here in the very front of it. And then we've got more wear and tear right here. All of that is going. I don't like pitted plastic on a $100,000 vehicle, or at least it was when it was new. Um, the, uh, the front splitter is going. ACS is going to take care of that for us. And uh, these side spats I'm also going to be doing uh, something with. So these are all wearable items that I'm not concerned in the least bit that there is um, issues with it. Now, uh, another thing to note, uh, this thing did have a little bit of a joyride before I purchased it. I can tell because there is a heat cycle through the front tires, but what's really weird is there isn't one done through the rears or if there is, ah, there kind of is a bit. So there was a little bit of a joyride on this before it was taken away. And I'm not concerned because this is a Grand Sports, which means that it is a track built model. It has a Z51 package underneath it dry sump system, mag ride, electronic limited slip differential. This thing is not a cruiser. It was made to go on the racetrack. And in my opinion, this is actually in a Z07 package faster than a Z06 around most racetracks because it does not have all the intercoolers and superchargers in it. And also because it's a traction limited powertrain, meaning that after about 500 horsepower, this powertrain can't put the power down because there's not enough weight in the back to be able to keep the wheels in contact with the road. So, uh, front end here, all this stuff's going. Gonna try, try to do an under tray on the budget. Um, these side marker lights, if I was being a wild child, I would smoke these out, but it is not a legal thing to do. You really wanna be careful with um, smoking out side marker lights. If you haven't figured it out yet, I'm gonna be doing a Stormtrooper theme with this, uh, white and black uh, with this one. Black being the contrasting color um, because of the Stinger stripe the transparent top, the black mirrors, and the black stage one spoiler in the back. So that is something that I would like to do, but I'm not planning on doing just because I want to respect if I ever got into an accident or something that my warranty would be void. Um, these wheels are a sensitive topic for a lot of Grand Sport owners. There is a lot of cracking uh, that happens in these wheels. So I've already taken the liberty of ordering a second set of wheels from the parts department. I've ordered a turbine set, um, which is a rare option wheel that was available. There's actually a ton of wheels right now that are available uh, for, for GM's C7s and their OEMs. This, again, a sensitive topic. There's a lot of people out there that have had their wheels get cracked and then the replacement wheels are non-existent. So their Corvette during the driving season is high and dry and, and stuck in a shop. I strongly suggest grabbing a set of these wheels from a parts store because they're GM OEM and they're under warranty. So in the event that I crack a wheel, I don't have to worry about waiting for a replacement wheel. I'm already going to have a set of extra wheels and I'm going to put them on right now and then keep this set as a backup in case something happens. So that I'm, I'm being proactive and I also want to just kind of reinvent the wheel a little bit, pardon the pun, in terms of getting this thing um, a little bit more stylish. We got a tertiary color of red, which we have accented nicely with these bright red gray calipers. And then we have it in the cross flags logo on the front and the back over here. Um, 
in terms of tires, there's tons of tread. I'm not concerned in the least bit. This has got 11,000 kilometers on it. So um, about halfway through the life cycle of one of these tires. With it being a 2019, I'm also not worried that it's um, uh, dried out and cracked from sitting around for too long. I did take this on highway speeds. I did spiritedly drive it to break it in. And I did not notice that there was any flat spots with the tires. So that was one thing. I do want to get an alignment when I do the tires and swap them out though, just to make sure that we're nice and set up. And I might even do a tire rotation once we get under here and see the wear on the treads on the inside of all these. So I might switch them from side to side while I'm switching out the tires. So that's one thing. Uh, the rocker panels, we're gonna, we're gonna take care of these. We're gonna extend them out. A little bit of wear right here, but not a lot. He did put some PPF on there and we got the red on the tertiary from the Grand Sport right here. Haven't seen any stone chips, which was really great as well. Um, a lot of times there's even chips inside of the, the, um, the front headlights. We do have a little very minor uh, chip here, which I can get filled in. He has a sun visor tint done to it, which I don't normally uh, do, but it's, it's kind of cool. This is a problem that happened on a lot of the C7s where the um, PPF starts to, um, with UV light, turn yellow. So I'm going to remove these and reapply new ones because um, it just it does not obviously go with the vehicle. As you can see, we've got some yellow on there, which is normal. And then the detective work on the inside starts. This guy wore a cell phone uh, clip on his hip. I can tell because that is a go-to sign of like an auto bo otter box clip. Or maybe he had a gun. Maybe he was a police officer or something like that. Maybe he had a Glock in here, but something was here. This whole piece comes out and I can replace it for a nominal cost. So one of my favorite things about the C7 is trim components are very modular and with T15 screws, which are these right here, usually you can replace almost anything you need on the inside with a trim very easily. This is Mulan leather because it's a 2LT. I don't see anything significant on here. The white baseball stitching still looks very good. This is the highest wear area that you'll see. The second area that you'll see it on is on the steering wheel and I don't see any major wear in the thumb locks. Over here, we do have a tint left on it, which was very nice. Um, usually the speaker covers usually get kicked up too. And then this sill plate does have a little bit of scratches on it, uh, but these are easily removable and we can switch these out very easy. So, so far, not too concerned about the interior. Oh, geez Louise, I forgot. I've got a transparent top. This is a rare option. Check that out, guys. Oh, I love it. Um, so rear tires, they're looking pretty good. They don't look like they've had any burnouts done. You can usually tell because there's a lot of um, basically melted rubber thrown up into the back of the wheel well. Um, it's the stage one. I'm really conflicted on what I'm going to do. I did order a high wing for this, and, and you're thinking high wing from the, the C8s. It's not. It's more like a Z51 spoiler from a C8 that I, I'll show you. And uh, the other option, which is way more cost effective, is just taking these T15s out and then throwing some wicker bills in there and uh, or little winglets and then maybe throwing a wicker bill in the, sec set in the center. Uh, for the exhaust, I don't think I'm going to touch it. The EPA is really starting to crack down on exhausts in particular through um, um, aftermarket suppliers. So they're now going to the actual aftermarket suppliers instead of going to the individual on the road. So you will not see as much uh, items in inventory. I was talking to my friends over at AWE yesterday and they said it's a $15,000 fine if you have a exhaust system that doesn't meet the EPA standards in terms of emissions. So they, they've really had to crack down on the amount of stuff. So cross pipes in particular are not something that you can get anymore, which is um, unfortunate because um, I was thinking I might just do a mid pipe on this. The crazy man in me was thinking of doing headers, long tubes, um, and then a, a cat back, but uh, I'm wanting to respect this budget, and I think that it's a good idea to just focus on the essentials um, and trying to get it ready for uh, a month from now. The exhaust system, in my opinion, might be a little overkill. <sighs> so, uh, yeah, you know what? I'm going to keep this episode short and sweet. 
There's a lot of other things that are on the lot right now. As you can see, I've got one, two, three, four, five Escalades that landed yesterday. I've got one that I've got going out today. I've got three deliveries actually. So I got to get this video edited and I got it on the road because I've got an Escalade delivery and two other truck deliveries today. And uh, we've got the parts already ordered. There's other things that we have going on this, but stay tuned guys. This is going to be a fun project and I'm excited to take you along for the adventure. So I'm Morgan Crosby. If you're just following along for the first time, I love cars. I work at a GM dealership and I like modifying them. Anytime I do modify a car, I'm gonna let you know how I did it and what I learned when I did it so that if you wanna do that yourself, you can watch this video. If you're a Canuck, you're in luck. I will be able to get you a vehicle ordered and you can get the whole Cars and Crosby experience at Finch Chevrolet here. I've got tons of vehicles in inventory. The XT Fizzle, which is one of my pride and joys, and Escalades as well are something that I focus on, as long, along with Corvettes. So, um, yeah, stay tuned for more awesome content. I'm Morgan Crosby, and happy motoring.